we are going to continue this lecture on the Li and Huang and we will see uh, complete the ecosystem model. We have seen in the, in the previous case, uh, in the previous lecture, uh, one part of the ecosystem, the service chain, we have mapped the service chain and we will see the other part of the ecosystem and we will map the ecosystem as well. So, before mapping, let us look at the what is the input output model of uh, uh, Li and Fa. You know, look at the, you get uh, uh, the uh, product development design and planning. That is what Li and Fang does for the customers. Once it is approved, it gets the uh, the supply chain finance and production monitoring, etc. Its inputs are, as we have seen, the relationship with suppliers, government and other stakeholders, knowledge of the industry environments and the ecosystem. That is the input that it gives. And other inputs are resource and knowledge management and shares. Of course, it does the sourcing, it does the factory sourcing and all that, but those and also mm, those are a part of uh, uh, the product development design and the planning, supply chain planning, etc. But the input output, in the input output model, we have an input. These are all the five inputs that come from Li and Fang and the output is on time delivery of desired products to its customers. So, this is, this you can closely see that uh, uh, what are the kinds of that in, uh, things that are involved, the inputs that are involved are inputs required for any orchestrator. Uh, but let us see. Uh, uh, these things more clearly. Now, here if you look at uh, B, that is the business or the service chain or supply chain, is the design, engineering and production planning, raw material and component sourcing from suppliers and quality control, testing, logistics, information services and finance and finally, supply chain execution. These are all the business functions of the uh, uh, the service chain and uh, we call it bird because the uh, of this reason. I are the institutions, what are the institutions that is the governments, labor factors choosing sourcing countries based on cost and quality, trade agreements, multi-fiber agreement, quota access, export and import regulations, local and international tensions. There could be some problems between the country or uh, and, and internationally. Cultural differences, the difference in the supplier's operating culture. So, these are important about the quality. These are the institutional factors and social factors. And the resources, knowledge of suppliers across the globe, relationship with all the suppliers in its network, staff who are experienced in executing various tasks involved in the services, IT logistics and financial assets. And the delivery mechanisms or it is not just logistics, connecting and scanning information with participants and points in the supply chain, linking with the customer computer systems, adopting customers in-house software system centralized back office systems using IT to coordinate logistics, control room that links all the facilities to the headquarters. This delivery mechanism is the one that makes the supply chain execution possible. <coughs> we call this bird because these are the business functions. I mean this is comes from the service uh, chain and these are the resources and these are the uh, institution function. So, basically anybody has to uh, get these functions done with the constraints of the institutions with the resources they have using the delivery mechanisms. So, you can see the importance of this. These act as constraints. These are the resources that you use here to, manu to uh, uh, perform these functions and these are the delivery mechanisms that you have. So, let us map the Li and Fang ecosystem. So, what are the industry value chains as we have gone through this several times, design, engineering and production planning. 
and you have another one is material and factory sourcing, quality control, IT, finance and logistics and order monitoring and execution. These are the four functions that we have seen in the, in the service chain uh, that we have. But what happens here is design, manufacturing and production planning, each of these functions will have another service chains and similarly when you are sourcing the materials you have to basically have a, another service chain so that whatever wherever you are sourcing you have to check the quality you have to choose a logistics provider and send it where it is it has destined to and so on so each of these have their own service chains in this and of course what are the resources the country staff each in other words, these are and found staff in each country, information collection and business connections. Their function is just to connect with people and also connect the information and pass it on to the headquarters. And connections with and with and knowledge about the industry clusters. If there are any clusters, industry partners, human resources with needed talent, finance and training and resources financial and training resources. So basically it is the resources that we have. And in such institutions, customs, export, free trade agreements, multi-fiber agreements, quotas and other regulators. Quality control and environmental issues, political, social, financial and trade issues. So these are important social, political and economic issues and trade issues are the ones that are important for the institutions. Delivery finance, logistics and IT coordination, links with suppliers back office and data collection and machine learning. So if you look at uh, the, uh, the supply chain, if you have drafted this or if you have drawn this then and now go back and see uh, this one then probably any orchestrator like Lee and Fang can come up with what are the kinds of uh, what are the kinds of competencies that they should have and so on. Of course, in this particular case, I am drawing this after uh, so that you learn about what Lee and Fung does and you can map this and so on. But on the other hand, if you have a, a hypothetical orchestrated system with, uh, with some kind of thing, then you can still come up with the same kind of thing and uh, generate what are the kinds of competencies that they should have, what should be the core competency and so on. So uh, it is possible to do that in the, in the reverse direction also. So let us look at what are the resources uh, here. The resources that uh, uh, that Lee and Fang has, Lee and Fang has ties with more than 8000 factories in 40 countries. So it has to manage uh, people in 40 countries, so it has to keep data about 40 countries, their trade and regulations, uh, cultures and so on and also 8000 factories it has to keep the, uh, the data, enables low cost large scale manufacturing using more than one factory for an order. This we have seen uh, even earlier that the capacity of the factory may not be enough, so it may use more than one factory in more than one country. The benefit of re resilience relies on relying on a few manufacturers has risks of losing projects because of drop in quality, insufficient manufacturing capabilities and financial problems, etc. So one thing is why 8000? See you should understand one thing, when you have more number of this one you may have resilience. In other words, if one supplier factory closes down for some reason, you have others who can do the same thing. But you have the coordination costs of coordinating with all these factories and if it is in 40 countries, then you have to maintain maintain relationship with all these governments and uh, customs and, and so on and also keep the information of what are the changes that are happening in various free trade agreements and trade relations and so on. So there is a low cost manufacturing and there is the benefit of resilience but there is also a coordination cost that happens. Connections with 8000 factories each with 5000 workers provides access to over 4 million workers though the network 
Though its network, the company gets a benefit without having to manage. Through its network, the company gets the benefit without having to manage 4 million workers. All this is fine, but there is the coordination that is required and there are coordination costs that are required and the governance becomes, governance which we are going to see becomes more tough. So what are the technologies in the service chain business? Information based decision making. All database decision making is fundamental for new and found business. Developments in AIT can be, uh, can be a threat. In other words, you can easily get commoditized or there are disruptive technologies that are happening in IT like big data and all that and it is very important that people, uh, the, the employees of uh, Lee and Fung get access to machine learning and big data techniques that are happening, uh, coming in this. Otherwise, if some other company gets on top of these kinds of technologies, much earlier than Lee and Fang, then there is a, that becomes a threat. So, in 1997, for example, uh, in the first uh, information technology revolution, B2B exchanges began to expand with the speculation that traders like Lee and Fang will be disintermediated. Lee and Fang started Studio Direct, which it shut down in two years. So, they thought, they, everybody thought in those days, B2B exchanges or connections between companies and people are going to trade over these exchanges. So, but then what the B2B exchanges does not provide and what people like Lee and Fung provide is the trust and is the, is the confidential information about the suppliers and so on. So, you can still buy using an exchange. It's like buying on the internet. The relationship that Li and Fang seeks with its customers is narrow and deep. It's not one point of contact, but a multi-level issue, CEO to CEO, manager to manager, shipping clerk to shipping clerk, etc. So that's the kind of relationship it maintains. While technologies such as video conferencing, internet advertising, RFID tax for supply chain visibility, etc. can aid human decision making, human's touch still remains an advantage. So that's the benefit that uh, uh, this one. But on the other hand, Li and Fang also uh, uh, follows and it also follows track, keeps track of the disruptive, disruptive technologies as they are happening like uh, uh, let it be video conferencing, let it be Wi-Fi or mobile and update itself with those. So, what are the the things, I mean, we looked at the, in the ecosystem, we looked at the service chain, we looked at the resources and we looked at the service, we look at the now service delivery mechanisms. What are the service delivery mechanisms? There are four C's of Li and Fung. Connections, we have been saying this because that's one of the takeaways from this particular uh, Li and Fung case is the, that how important are the connections. The government contacts in Hong Kong and Beijing, the ability to reduce impact of quota restrictions and so on. So there are several advantages of, uh, of having connections with the government. And of course, communications. When you have 8,000 suppliers for 40 countries and you want to collect information and you want to monitor what is happening in all this, uh, all the factories everywhere and also all the logistics uh, in in, uh, in various uh, trucks, ships and so on, it's important to have a communication system. And of course, control of quality in terms of attention to detail and consolidation of shipments. So, one of the ways in which if you are only a single supplier, single manufacturer trying to get your this one, your products, supposing one big retailer wants to get products and it contacts all the suppliers that Li and Fang has and get the shipment, but then it has shipment is solo. It may not have the scale to basically consolidation so that it can go in in several containers and uh, so that the transportation cost is cheap. So that's one of the consolidation of shipments is another advantage that it has. So one can look at four C's, so connections, 
communications, control of quality and attention, attention to detail and consolidation of shipments which is the logistics. These are the four strengths of uh, uh, and all of them help in terms of the service delivery. For example, the connections of course they act as the oil for uh, basically getting your customs and other clearances quickly and you save time, you save one and your safety inventory, safety stocks and so on. Your communications of course help uh, uh, in, in terms of uh, uh, keeping in touch with uh, this one and of course we know that information can always replace inventory and there is cost saving and there is the attention cost of quality and the quality can be basically checked through video conferencing and all that and consolidation of shipments of course there is a cost advantage. So the, these are the four things which are service delivery mechanisms which uh, uh, qualities of service delivery mechanisms which help and IT logistics, IT as a core strength sophisticated IT and centralized back office systems. <coughs> so as we said in this one for every order the front end and the back end are done in Hong Kong and the middle rather intensive portion <coughs> is dispersed over the globe over the Asia Pacific and there is all the 8000 suppliers who are there they keep in touch with the headquarters. So there is a sophisticated uh, centralized back of system with a lot of data mining this one focused on connecting and sharing information across headquarters, customers, sourcing offices and factories, warehouses etc. So there is an information transfer, uh, share information that goes on and this is basically the velocity of this particular information could be the information transfer could be very high and the volumes certainly are high and so the variety of the data it could be uh, audio, it could be telephone data, it could be it could be video or it could be data. So this is basically a typical big data that goes in in the in the uh, IT and logistics scenario. And logistics is very important, the physical transfer of goods is very important and managed very well as each product travels across supplier countries moving in most optimized value chain for it to assume in the finished form. You can see that when, when, you, when you look at the example I gave that something is done in Korea and then it transferred to Taiwan and then finally it goes to Thai, Thai, Thailand and so on. So why is this transfer taking place? I mean is it, it looks to, to, to conventional wisdom, it looks that it, it will be cheaper if it is done at one all places because there are transportation costs involved, there are loading unloading costs involved, there are coordination costs are involved. If adding all this, if it is it still cheaper to do it at different places, the answer is a big yes. And why? It is because of the logistics which it maintains. So it basically the, the the coordination and the logistics functions of Lee and Bank are extraordinary and that is what makes the whole thing uh, the whole thing very cheap. What are the other values added services that uh, uh, Lee and Fung this one? One is uh, the in terms of the delivery mechanism, knowledge management service. Well, one thing is to acquire knowledge and the other thing is to manage the knowledge and pass it on to the people who are making the decisions. So you have the country uh, uh, centers in each country who collect the information but that information need to be transmitted to the uh, uh, to the people in Hong Kong to who are the who are in charge of the customers so that when our customer order comes these people use this information to select the suppliers and also I mean they select suppliers for each product each this one. So there is the this collection of this information in the, in the three stages of, uh, of uh, the governance structure. The first one is to collection of all the and pooling all the suppliers at all the places. So that is a knowledge management service. Monitoring suppliers work on its customer orders. 
are with the supplier performing? Has it started it on time? Is the quality good? Are the resources available? So, is the issue. Assure quality and on time delivery. So, basically your suppliers have to deliver to you on time and you should deliver to your customer on time. And of course, the same quality products. One thing is the quality assurance becomes <coughs> a tricky issue because you are manufacturing across the globe and the same product is, is coming from several factories. So, several uh, the, the, the issue becomes uh, very important for it to monitor. And of course, there is supply chain finance design and planning in the supply chain. So, basically the supply chain finance events, you know, you basically finance your suppliers, your logistics providers and so on because the supplier, supposing the bank and the supplier goes been bankrupt and if it is then a critical product where the capabilities are rest only with that supplier, then what do you do? You have to finance them and then of course you will get it back when the product is sold. So, these are value added functions apart from the IT and logistics and so on. And quality assurance is inspect, supervise an order and it varies with the complexity of the manufacturing process. Well, if it is dolls, if there is a lead paint that comes in and there could be some product recalls that may happen and suppliers degree of experience with Lee and Fung and its cost here. So, basically the manufacturing process, its complexity and the suppliers experience with Lee and Fung, they matter, you have to inspect and supervise each order. I think depending on the particular product, I mean if you are, if you are an apparel industry, it may not be very uh, uh, critical, but if you are in the, in the soft dolls and so on, soft goods industries, then it may become an issue if where the people things like lead, lead paint or if you are in the food industry, contamination or adulteration, these are the kinds of good issues could be, could be uh, an issue here. But of course, for Lee and Fang, it is in the, in the textile business, so this may not be a big issue. But still, uh, the quality become is an important issue. This. So, what are the institutions? This one, that are the governments and so on doing. We covered some of these factors earlier, but still, let's put them together. So, international division of labor. I mean, like the Adam Smith's division of labor across in the local sense. Now, what uh, Lian Fang or the orchestrator does is to do the uh, division of labor in the international sense. So, allocation of production to least expensive countries and hence dependent on the labor, on the labor prices and frequent changes in the relationships between labor costs in the different countries. There basically the labor costs keep changing. For example, in China and India, every, every, every year there is a, there is a change uh, in the, uh, this one because the adjustment to the inflation. Adjust, and also the same people, if they are there, then they require promotions and salary enhancements and so on. And challenge always is to chase productive low cost labor around Asia. So, what now happens is, if you are sourcing from China and if the cost advantage of China is lost, in other words, if the labor becomes expensive in China and the power costs become expensive, then you have to find some other countries. You go to some other country to where it is cheaper to do the same task. So, this chase productive low cost labor around Asia is an important thing that that is uh, they, they, they look for. So, basically that is where there are frequent changes uh, that happen in the countries sourcing uh, this one. And what about trade restrictions? So, nowadays after the financial crisis in 2008, countries have turned protectionist. 
and countries like United States including Europe they have turned protectionist and so there is each country is imposing different restrictions such as tariffs or quotas or imports from each trading partner complicating the estimates of cost of manufacturing. So basically what happens is because of these restrictions supposing the tariffs increase so that means your logistics costs increase once the logistics costs increase your product costs increases so and also if you have a trading partner from China and if the uh, then the country imposes several restrictions on that then the cost from China increases so earlier it was cheaper now it increases so it becomes you have to do some kind of online execution or uh, selection of these partners uh, because things are changing constantly. Most important bring being the multi-fiber agreement for textiles since textile dominated its business. This multi-fiber agreement is, is where as I said before is quota system. Each country is allocated certain quota and in other words if you are in Vietnam, Vietnam can export either to Europe or US total so much so much of in dollar dollar terms so much of exports so then in other words uh, how does uh, to, to take advantage of this multi fiber agreement you can you may you may try to source it from China because it is cheaper but their quota is over so you have to go to the next cheaper country so the constraints of sourcing come from not only the cost, not only the government regulations, but also the global agreement arrangements like the multi-fiber agreements. So yearly quotas for the amount of each textile product that could be exported by each low-cost country to each high-cost country. That is the multi-fiber agreement. So that also matters a lot for uh, 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 in, in terms of uh, the institutions, they are the economic factors. So when we are talking of uh, the the ecosystem, when you are selecting your suppliers, your selection of suppliers depends on one thing is the cost of the labor, and also the cost of uh, the uh, trade uh, the tariffs, and also the quotas. Quotas come in as a as a constraint in your problem when you are trying to uh, do this. So, these institutions play a very important role, uh, particularly when you are doing uh, the sourcing of uh, the factory sourcing. And of course, this uh, people have used it to advantage. If you if your quota in China is over, then you establish a factory or help somebody to establish a factory in Vietnam, Cambodia, and so on, and source it from there. So because you can use the uh, this one, but the multi-fiber agreement in 2005 or 2006, there was a move to cancel this, but uh, the cancellation has not been that effective. Okay, let's look at uh, this one. So, what we did so far is to map the ecosystem. So, what is the ecosystem? Ecosystem has the service chain, which we dealt with this one from the customer order till uh, till the delivery to the customer. And uh, the second thing is the resources that we looked at uh, the resources, the delivery mechanisms of various kinds and also the institutions roles in this. So we looked at the investment climate for the service chain and there as I said before, uh, presented before, we are looking at uh, 40 countries and 8,000 suppliers and about 4 million employees and, and so on. So basically this becomes a complicated thing. So let's look at once in the ecosystem framework, we use the ecosystem to do four things. One is the grip framework by call, the governance mechanism. And the second one is the risk. What are the risks that it faces? Well, of course, if you look at uh, something like Li and Fung and want to uh, uh, write down all the risks from the ecosystem, this one, 
well you can get lot of us from the supplier risk to uh, to the government turning protest protectionist risk to the logistics risks and so on so basically how does li and fang mitigate these kind of risks these are very common risks that can happen so if you if you can want to see how the 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 trade changes in the countries is a risk to uh, to li and fang but how does it mitigate it it mitigates it by having 8000 suppliers so 8000 need not may not may not do all same product but for each product there are at least 10 to 12 suppliers in different countries and it is always on the constantly on the move to develop uh, connections with suppliers in other new countries which are emerging so it is that move that li and fang makes it to Uh, to mitigate the risk of uh, any government changes that can happen and also in the agreements in the quotas and so on it also mitigates the risk of the resource uh, increases the prices of increases so on going to low cost countries so the delivery mechanisms it has its own logistics so anywhere in asia pacific however low is the logistics quality it doesn't affect this so you can see how nicely the risk is mitigated the common risk that can happen of course if there is a, a tsunami or a big earthquake and the whole thing goes down then there is nothing that anybody could do but in normal times for deviations and small disruptions and also the at the government level at the social level at the uh, resource level and at the service chain level li and fang uh, can can manage this so let's look at the performance what is performance reduction of customer inventory now by spreading speeding up the time to market we have seen that li and fang time to market from design to uh, to delivery is 5 to 6 weeks in other words if the spring tag starts on our fall starts on september 1st then july 15th the production starts so and also the customer can change the order before july 15th so because of the speed in time market and leveraging supply contracts across factories and production lines li and pang helps customer keep inventory low so you need not have to keep any inventory because it is a very fast delivery usually textile supply chains take to 6 months to 1 year and here is the case where highly customized products are produced and delivered within 5 to 6 weeks so you can see the advantage of inventory you need not to keep safety inventory maximum inventory you have to keep is 5 to 6 weeks not even that if it does this by reserving capacity with standard apparel items that it can easily switch to expand capacity for fashion sensitive orders i mean there are two kinds of orders that lay in front this one one is standard apparel orders you know you make blankets you make uh, uh, shirts bed sheets whatever those kind of this one and sometimes there could be fashion sense to orders like you know you want everybody likes red color everybody wants stripes and so on so then about there is this one they the since they, they know the the suppliers you can switch the capacity in this the by reserving the capacity they can switch either standard items or fashion sensitive items so that is the reduction in the customer inventory and what about price and quality li and fangs different product divisions have quality control managers responsible for types of products within defined regions in other words these are apple or products or whether ladies children or or men they the quality or if it is doing soft goods like uh, 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 baby dolls and so on so for each of them the managers are responsible one of li and fang's major strengths a particularly difficult task when manufacturing orders are spread among several factories so this is the the 
this is the major strength of uh, this one is the price and quality by managing the supply chain and ensuring the quality. No risk to the customer by managing the supply chain and ensuring quality before shipping an order Lee and Fang reduces returns from unsatisfied customers. So, there must be uh, uh, something in the uh, in, in thin lines between the contract that if the customer is not satisfied with the quality, then he can return it. But by managing the supply chain and ensuring the quality uh, before shipping an order, the end fund reduces the returns from unsatisfied sucks. So, in other words, there are three, uh, this one and one is cost, then the performance, in that performance one is the lead time, second one is the cost and third one is the flexibility and fourth one is the quality. So, you have here you can see that the cost is low because reduction of customer inventory and price and quality is all maintained because across the chain the quality is monitored and it is low risk to the customer because by managing the, sub the supply chain and ensuring quality before shipping order it reduces the returns. And delivery, Lee and Fung consolidate shipments to different customers to the same market achieving economies of scale. So, basically uh, you know it is like Walmart having a ship by it for itself and so on. So, but uh, uh, in Lee and Fung has the shipments to United States and, and Europe. So, it can consolidate all this and get advantages of scale. And of course, through proprietary exonite clients to look for project status. So, basically the IT network uh, is, is super for uh, uh, this and they, they basically they use this to get the project status of each of these clients. Trade financing to suppliers by providing them with finance financing, Lee and Fung can prevent delays due to problems of financing and speed up time to market. This is as I said before out of the 8000 suppliers if there is a critical suppliers and they cannot deliver on time because of some financing problems or uh, the letter of credit and so on. So, then Lee and Fung finances them. So, if you look at the cost management, the cost management reduction you reduce the inventory, you ensure quality, you ensure the price and you give delivery through consolidation and IT network use it for this one and you trade finance. So, because of all this you can manage the cost. You can see how closely every process is monitored by, by Lee and Fung. So, this is this is like an execution expert in the process, not only planning but it is the execution. As we said earlier, the governance has three steps. The first step in the governance is selection of your partners, getting all the partners and getting it up on the network. The second one is the planning for each order, for each order select your partners and third one is the execution. So, you can see in all the three, uh, this one, the Lee and Fung excels. So, you can see one of the things that we were uh, talking about is uh, can Lee and Fung be disintermediated? In other words, uh, can somebody take over what is it? Supposing there is a, an order for 10 million, right? So, Commission paid if order is placed through Lee and Fung at 7 percent say, Lee and Fung gets 700,000. So, this for 10 million you have to pay 700,000 at 7 percent. But supposing that fellow says look I do not want to pay 700,000 it is just this one, but I want to do everything by myself. If this fellow wants to do everything replicating whatever Lee and Fung does is cost of maintaining, maintaining a Hong Kong office and expatriate office manager and salary benefits, 20 staff at 30,000 a year rent 
and other expenses it will come to 1,360,000. This is the real, the real cost at that time and so you save 680,000. So in other words savings from using Li and Fang is this and on the other hand even if you spend all this 1 million you are not sure of your quality because you have to basically spend all your time and worry about the quality and all that. But by giving 7 percent to Li and Fang you are not only saving 680,000 which is almost like half of what you spend you are also assured of sense of the uh, that of a product quality and time delivery and so on. So that is the kind of advantage that Li and Fang this one uh, gives. So if you want to beat Li and Fang then you have to be you have to bear all these costs and see well, how, how you can reduce it to 700,000 and so on. So let us uh, look at that is about the cost and the performance uh, and quality and so on. So finally the final one is the uh, that we are looking at is the governance. So as I said governance as we see it as, uh, in the pre previous three chapters it has uh, previous uh, this one it has uh, uh, three things one is the selection of, uh, of partners and and second one is the supply chain planning where for each order you, you select your suppliers and logistics providers and so on and third one is the execution. So let us see. Now William Fang follows the following governance model. Build the company around the customer. Now you can see that the customers of Lee and Fang are all business this one. So they are big customers. So each customer wants wants attention to them. So there is there, there is the, it's a customer oriented company. So for each customer there is a manager and so on. The supply chain starts with the customer's need and ends with customer's solution. So that is the governance model that it follows. And customer focused divisions, uh, the building blocks of Lee and Fung, this one. Each of them is kept small and entrepreneurial and is run by a lead entrepreneur. Lee and Fung provides them with financial resources and administrative support of a big organization, but each division is given a great deal of autonomy. In other words, the so called the manager of the division, once he gets the order, he goes through the service chain and the design settles the design and gets the product development team uh, this one and designs everything and from there selects the suppliers and the logistics providers, the delivery and all that is in the hands of the lead entrepreneur who is in charge of this section. So you can see although Lee and Fang is a, is a company by itself, the execution and everything, the selection, the supply chain planning and execution are in the hands of these customer divisions. And the money they make is basically based on this and whatever they save in the soft three, three dollars is goes to this particular division. All the merchandising decisions that go into coordinating the production program for the customer are made at the division head level. Even from maintains a large number of divisions around 60 and divisions are portfolio that are created and collapse almost at will. In other words, they can, if there is a customer this one from the US they can create it. If there is a suddenly some rise uh, of customers from Middle East they may create division for Middle East and once the, uh, the demand subsides they will close it. So it is a basically uh, very uh, customer based divisions and the, the, the portfolio are created and they can collapse at will and they can create and they can remove the, these things at will. But their functions are the same. Their functions are whatever follow the service chain and deliver the products to the customer at, uh, at the right price at the right time 
and at the right place. So, what is the organization structure? Each customer is allocated to a division <coughs> that handles all of the customer orders using Lee and Fong network. A division may handle more than one customer. And thus, Lee and Fong stand in each division become experts on their customers' needs and develop relations with customer staff. So, as I said before, it is the CEO to CEO, manager to manager, clerk to clerk and so on. So, that kind of relations happens both with the customers, lead customers as well as with the, with the suppliers. Yes. And the members of a division will receive the same commission revenue no matter which supplier they use, thus making them behave impartially. So, the point here is it is not the question which supplier you are using, it is the question how much are you making in the soft 3. In the soft 3 dollars, how much are you saving? So, you can use anybody as long as you deliver the quality products at the right time, at the right place, at the right price and also you make money for the company. Compensation heavily depends on the division's financial performance, but not on the choice of supplier for a customer. So, that is the kind of drive that it has, where you, the compensation is heavily dependent on the division's financial performance. So, there is no preference for suppliers in any country or any particular suppliers in a particular country. But it is only all financial and also professional, professional in the sense is the performance sensitive, performance in terms of cost which means inventory, which means the speed of delivery and so on and also in terms of the quality of the product so that the customer should not in the end should not return the product saying that it is a low quality product and also in terms of uh, the lead times because everything is done within 5 to 6 weeks they are delivered. So, if it is a fall or a summer this one it has to be delivered on time to this one. Centralized support services frees traders from the dredge work. Now, if I will show you, I will show you the diagram which shows this one. Now, while this is, uh, it is customer centric, there are some services which I said in the, the front end back end services, the financial services and all organization of logistics and other kinds of things and whatever information that country heads provide to uh, this one consolidation of all that is all done by at in Hong Kong by the office. So, these people, the customer centric centers, they are only concerned about the product design, product manufacturing and product delivery. They are not concerned about other uh, things like finances, payment uh, and so on and all that. So, let us look at the diagram. So, you have the managing director of Lee and Farm and there are soft goods, hard goods and services and soft goods are the client account managers <coughs> and there are several of them, several of them, you know we said there are 60 accounts at any point in time and each manager <coughs> is responsible for procurement, logistics, quality and delivery. These are the four things that each manager is responsible for each client and we have several of them through this. So, these are all the managers of the soft goods and the hard goods the same thing. But there is the CCC service center which I was talking about which is based out of Hong Kong where the manager services of financial, HR, ITES and all other services having country centers to collect information and data mining all that information and this, uh, passing on to them. All these services are done in Hong Kong, they are all centralized. So, 
here you can see the, the governance structure here. The managing director has all these services. These are all independent of the products, whether it is soft goods or hard goods. But each of these people, they get the information as they need about the country and that will enable them to make the decisions and so on. So, if you call it data based information based uh, decision making or information based decision making uh, or a real time decision making, you can call it whatever you like, but this is the kind of organization structure that enables the data based or information based decision making in the Leon Fong case. So, what we did so far is Leon Fong is an excellent example of orchestration. So, and this can be followed in lots of other service industries in agriculture and so on. But if you look at uh, our uh, contribution to this is we are following the ecosystem framework and we were able to map the activities, current activities of Lee and Fang into the ecosystem. So, what is the advantage of using the ecosystem framework? and particularly in orchestrator. We have, so you can now generalize these things and in the ecosystem framework and see how, what are the important factors that an orchestrator should do in the ecosystem and what are the kinds of things, the capabilities that they should build up. And as we said, the connections, knowledge, database, decision making, these are all the learnings that we got from this particular thing. So, we should, it is a non-trivial uh, learning that we have got uh, from this particular case and it's, if, if it is possible for someone who is interested to generalize all this and write a, write a, a thesis or a, or a paper on orchestrator and what should be the qualities and what are the decision making methodologies that you can use. And of course, here big data cloud computing because all this data and even information everything can be stored on a computing for all in a cloud for all the 8000 partners and for all the countries and they can be accessed and processed and you can use machine learning algorithms for data based decision making for each of these suppliers. At least you can build a decision support system which will help the each of these customer based managers in the addition making. So, thank you and then we'll see.